This is Community Unity Now, the D Tycoon Show. I am Trudy Leong, Administrator of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce with my co-host, Bill Morton, President of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce. And our very special guest today is Andrea Rayla. She is a property tax reform advocate. Welcome, Andrea. Thank Welcome. you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this issue that I know people when they see you and hear property taxes are like, oh, but it's a critical topic and I'm so glad to be here to inform people. Mm -hmm. And you're not only the professional, um, it's your passion as well. It is absolutely my passion. I've been doing it for 33 years mm -hmm. and I've been a taxpayer advocate and worked at the Cook County Board of Review as an analyst. So I worked in government for 10 years. Also under the Harold Washington administration, he mm -hmm. hired us as the first taxpayer advocate office. And then I started on my own doing tax appeals, but I give presentations everywhere. When you worked as an analyst, uh, what did you analyze? We actually heard, I was a case analyst, and we would hear thousands of property owners come to us and ex explain why they can't afford the taxes and the evidence that they had that they should require them to get an adjustment and we would look over the evidence some people didn't know what to bring in and we would see if they had a case and decide to give them a reduction or not so for our viewers could you explain to us what a um, property tax assessment or property tax appeal um, looks like well the tax system that we have in Cook County is a little bit unique it's more unique than all the other counties outside and so when the assessor sets a market value for your home or any other property, he establishes an estimated value or he actually looks at a prior sale of your home if it's like three or four years old. Then he takes that sale or that estimate and let's say it's $300,000 and by Cook County law, you have to take 10% of that and that's called your assessment. So 300,000 market value, 30,000 is the assessed valuation. So, so just a, a, a question here. Um, if, if something sells for an extraordinary amount in, in your neighborhood or your region, is yes. it, are they regions? Neighborhoods. Okay. They're assessment neighborhoods mm -hmm. within a township, mm -hmm. Rogers Park, Lakeview Township, West Chicago, and they could have 77 to 150 uh, neighborhood, neighborhood codes. Mm -hmm. And so I know that Rogers Park Township, let's not be confused here, is not Rogers Park Community Area 1. It's different. It's different. For property tax purposes, it will expand and probably take up West Ridge and some of the other neighborhoods that people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. So when you get that assessment notice, which, by the way, City of Chicago is going to get reassessed in this year, the first township up will be Rogers Park, the township, and then probably Lakeview sometime in the summer. But there's eight townships that all the property owners are going to get their reassessments, and that'll be that 10% of that market value what there. What does that mean to the, the current property owners, and what does that mean to um, renters? It has an impact on both, because when a property owner gets a reassessment where the taxes may go up a great deal, the renters have a landlord, right? Mm -hmm. And that landlord, when he gets his reassessment notice, he tries to fight it, just like the homeowners often do, but he tries to fight it, but if he can't get it down and his taxes go from 60000 on a 30-unit rental building to 180000 which is not uncommon, not uncommon, he might be able to get it down to 80,000. So it goes from 60,000 to 80,000, but it would have, would have been 180,000 had he not appealed. Well, what is he gonna do with that difference? He's gonna raise the rents. He's not gonna be the good guy. He's not gonna eat it on his own. He's going to do the business thing, he the money yeah. thing, and raise the rents. And so that 20,000 is gonna be spread over those 30 renters. And that could mean, you know, him asking for 20 or $50 more on the monthly rent. So what, what is the kind of evidence that best helps uh, an appeal to get the taxes down? For, for a single family home to a two flat, six unit condos, the best that you can use is what's called lack of uniformity, meaning when the assessor creates an algorithm that sets the value for your neighborhood, 
you might see these 60% and 50% increases, 30%, and they may be unjustified. So he will have different assessments and market values set for everyone else. You can go on the assessor's website and get those comparable properties, those other two flats. You own a two flat. And you can find six two flats that have a market value of, let's say, 200000 and your market value is 400000 and the buildings are almost identical. And the, you, know, you may be collecting even rent on one. So you give them those six comparables that are lower than yours, or if you have an appraisal. We refinance, don't we? And when we get a refinance, we have an appraisal. Sometimes that appraisal works against what the assessor estimates the market value is. So when you're referring to the assessor, you're referring to Cook County Assessor Fritz Kege? Yes, yes. So that's his... Uh, statutory duty is to set market values on all property types and not only that to allow the taxpayer to come into his office and file tax appeals saying you you didn't get this magic number right he has to look at 1.8 million parcels of property and within the city of chicago there are hundreds of thousands of homeowners of course and businesses and it's hard to, to get it right. How could you be staffed enough to cover that many properties? I agree with you right there. They are understaffed and overwhelmed. And I'll tell you why. There was a time when Cook County had 38 township assessors. In other words, Chicago had eight townships and all of the collar counties have 30 townships. They already have elected township assessors in those 30 townships but their right to assess the property in their own township was taken away. And so it was given all to the central downtown office, the Cook County Assessor. And they're not even elected township assessors for Lakeview, Rogers Park. They don't even have elected township assessors. I believe they should, and I believe that we should push the responsibility on, the col on those collar suburbs to set their own market values as they are elected township assessors. They have the ability to, to do so. And who doesn't better know their own township but than the township elected assessor? Who centralized that, <coughs> all, that, uh, all those assessors to uh, downtown? They, the, those township assessors have to stay within their offices, like in Oak Park mm -hmm. or Berwyn or wherever they're from. They have a small township office and they help people file appeals but they don't set the values. They help people find exemptions, but they don't set the values. If you allowed them to set the values, the values would be more accurate and then allow the Cook County Assessor to oversee the eight townships if he so chose and didn't want to have elected township assessors. It functions like that in all 101 counties. All 101 counties have elected township assessors that all do their own assessments and then if you don't like the assessment, you can talk to them or go to the Lake County Board of Review and challenge it there. So we're just odd. And I think when you centralize the power like that, it just, there's too many mistakes being made. Who benefited most with uh, that centralization of power? I think probably the Cook County Democratic Party because they changed it in 1979. And I hate to say that, but maybe it was, mm -hmm. you know, but what I'm saying is they wanted to, cons there's, I don't think there's ever been a Republican Cook County assessor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's, all, and there's, you know, since 1932, okay, 1939, uh, no, 1932, it was 39 when the Cook County Board came in. But my point is, when you concentrate that kind of power, I don't think you can set these values correct. And I think when you are an elected assessor, I think there's politics at play. Regardless if the assessor doesn't collect money and contributions from tax lawyers or appraisals. The point is, there are so many assessment districts across this country where the county assessor is appointed, is appointed by six judges. Mm -hmm. And it takes the politics completely out of it. I have always been an advocate for an appointed central Cook County assessor uh, with assess elected, <laughs> with elected township assessors. So are assessments fairer under those uh, kind of jurisdictions? Absolutely. And you know how I know? Cook County files 23% of its entire assessment base complaints, 23%. The other jurisdictions, five, mm. five to three. 
Now there is high tax appeals in Texas and there are high tax appeals in New Jersey because New Jersey is the highest taxing district. So there is a load there. Illinois comes next, Cook County, and then Texas. But nobody beats us with that 23% as, as, as far as, because even New Jersey, I think, falls under 19%. Illinois and Chicago seem to be number one for all the wrong reasons I, in many cases. Yes, yeah. With, with the comparables, uh, I uh, helped before to send in comparables and it didn't work. They actually uh, kind of ignored them, but I know that those comparables were correct. The neighborhood code was correct. All the details were correct. The, the size was correct. And uh, I had the evidence from like the newspapers, the, the sales, that it was substantially lower than that property. and. It didn't help. It didn't help. Mm -hmm. It depends on where you start. If you do comparable evidence and you start at the assessor, they're very conservative. They're mm -hmm. very conservative and they don't want to give up what beautiful number they created. Mm -hmm. But when you move on to the Board of Review, the Cook County Board of Review, they're a little bit more, you know, embracing of that. And and I know it can be hard, but you can you can always complement your lack of uniformity mm -hmm. that they're under assessing other properties with Put your, put your address in Google and it will generate online values. And I'm going to tell you, those online values are frequently below the assessor's values. Mm -hmm. So you could just print those online values out to complement your, your lack of uniformity, your picking of other properties mm -hmm. pretty close to your own. Try to stay three, try to stay on your block three blocks away, four blocks away mm -hmm. for those comparables. So so Google is actually um, crunching the numbers and, and you can look it up and they're doing this job for how many properties? Well, the assessor is doing it for 1.8 million and he's taking District 1, Chicago, and, and putting in algorithms. He is taking sales that are out there. And yes, he does look at the the multiple listings and he looks at the sales that are up there. And he may put that in too, even though it may not be an actual sale. Mm -hmm. So he puts a lot of data in to try to get those numbers right. And unfortunately, there's also a movement where people don't realize this. They don't realize that once the assessor puts a $300,000 market value on your home, there's actually a market value on the land and a market value on what they call the improvement, the mm -hmm. home. The total equals 300,000. And what we have noticed in the last Chicago triennial, which was 2021, the value of land has escalated where the land might represent 75% of your tax bill. How did that happen? It's, a, it's, it's how they have been valuing land specifically under neighborhoods they feel are trendy. So, so it's very arbitrary, you it, say. I think we're trying to, we did a land study and, and we produced a land study and we're trying to get the data from the assessor's office. A long time ago, they used the Blue Alcott book, but that, that was, you know, there are, there are values that were set in West Chicago. Do you remember when Pilsen was in an uproar with the reassessments, Pilsen mm -hmm. community, and they were, they actually went downtown and they held up their signs and said, this is ridiculous their land values went up 75%. Mm -hmm. The land values in the Lakewood, Get Balmoral and Glen Lake area went up 50%. And then sometimes they'll lower the improvement value just to keep that land value up. When you can't see that on your reassessment notice, mm -hmm. that's not transparency. Many years ago, actually in 2018, many years ago, I guess, there was a reassessment notice. And I, I know that people are probably familiar with the old reassessment notice, but I brought one in here and it would break down the land and the building. And it looked something like this. So the reassessment notice, you can see the land is there, the building breakdown is there. You can see the, the changes in the land and the building. You can see the comparables that they use and the sales that they use, the six comps. And you saw a lot of data, okay? You saw the taxes and so forth. That's kind of hard for our viewers to see to this see. right here. They can't see it they at can't. all. Actually. Okay, okay, but, but now here's it. the new one. Mm -hmm. The new one, what do you see? Nothing mm -hmm. except for market values. No breakdowns, mm -hmm. none. So, I mean, I know the viewers can't see it, but they can see the stark difference between the new non-transparent one and the one that has a photograph of your property the breakdown of the land and building 
and the actual sales that so we've happen. So we have, let's just say we have uh, 60 fields on the first one and we have maybe four, one, two, three. Three or four and, or five and just fields field. on the second one, right. on the new one. Um, are there any lawsuits about the lack of transparency? No, not with this, but I think people are super frustrated with it, mm -hmm. you know, and what I do think people do about we, it? we can advocate, you know, what we could do, we could ask the Cook County Board, okay, the, the 18 County Board elected board members and the president of the county to demand that the assessor, he, he can do anything he wants internally, but to demand that the assessor go to a more transparent, um, you know, <coughs> assessment of showing the land, showing the building, and then the total. So I just want to go over this real, real quick. A year a level of assessment, um, the land value, building value, total value. It gives value. you three years, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he gives three years as well, but he just gives he just gives the market value and then what the assessment is. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think we need more data for people to be more comfortable and confident. You know, you want to have people competent in the property tax system. You really do. You don't want them to have this angst and this, like, you can't figure it out. You got to hire a lawyer each and every time. You shouldn't have that kind of t a system. You should have taxpayers who feel competent in the system and feel that, you know, okay, my assessment was raised 15%. I'm okay with that. There's not that level of confidence in the taxpayers in Cook County and Chicago because they see a lot of things that are not transparent and not understandable. And I think we need to be more understandable. For that percentage of appeals, uh, did it go up during Higgy's uh, tenure or was it Unfortunately, about the same? it was the same. same. It, was, it was the same level, I'm sorry to say, mm -hmm. during the Berrios year. Mm -hmm the Houlihan year and the Hines, it was high. It wasn't maybe as high as 23, but it was way too high, mm -hmm. way high, over the national average. Uh, was, was, there, was there a major change between each of the administrations? I think the way they operated their offices, they did it, I, I believe that James Houlihan helped gr tremendously increase the IT and was very transparent. Um, with Berrios, he was there for a long time, and at least he maintained uh, um, transparency in this. Mm -hmm. Actually, Houlihan's office had just a small postcard that sent you your reassessment notice. But he, he had other things that helped. He was very progressive. It was the Berrios team that did this, where they put it out on a large paper like this, showed the photograph and that sort of thing. And then when, when Fritz Kage came, he came to a simple, a oversimplification. But I can say one thing about the Kage administration. They have improved the IT. They have emphasized the uh, computer system. And you now can file electronically mm -hmm. with him. It's just that they're understaffed. And they don't always have the expertise, like the staff that really have been there for a long time or in the real estate industry and understand what is fair. But they're, they're overwhelmed by the, the appeals. You, you cannot have that many appeals and get a, a, a good result. You just, you just can't. It's impossible. You came in, there, there was a case, and this was shared with me by a commissioner at the Cook County Board of Review. He's no longer there. He shared this with me. He said a case came in, and it was from a homeowner. And the homeowner said, a plane crashed into my house and the house is burnt down. It is just land. He showed the plane. Mm -hmm. He showed the land. When he got his tax appeal done, they lowered the value of the land, and they didn't even they they didn't even take the house off. So that so there is no house. I mean, there there was no house. They should have, you know, removed, removed the, the house, mm -hmm. and 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 then you don't have to really adjust the land, but just mm -hmm. move the house. So anyway. He created, the board created a warning if something like that happens that, you know, you could overlook something like that. And they did catch that and, you know, they took the house off and, and made the adjustment. Extreme example. It's an extreme example, but there are extreme problems that do happen. Mm -hmm. There was a transition where, you know, a transcript error was made at the assessor's office and a 13-unit um, building property taxes went from 10000 to 89000 and it was this transcription error, and it wasn't corrected at the assessor, and we got it to the board, and it wasn't corrected at the board. We had to go back to the assessor and say, this is a transcription error, but the tax bill came out, and it was 
13,000 last year, excuse me, and 89,000 this year. Was it transcription by a person or a transcription Pointy. by? Yeah, mm. when you put in a number mm. and they meant to put 40,000 and they put to mean that the building was worth 400,000 and they put 400,000, the mm -hmm. building was worth four, four, like four million or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just ridiculous. Are, are, these all, are these all actual mistakes or is there something there, else there? There were actual mistakes, mm -hmm. but then we also see some things that can't be mistakes. They're just friction between the two agencies. Between would, uh, which agencies? The Cook County Assessor's Office and the Board of Review. Mm. And so, you know, Fritz Kage is advocating, you know, to make sure that the Board of Review has friendly three elected commissioners. Mm -hmm. But he's also been advocating and wrote a letter to the editor to remove the Illinois State Property Tax Appeal Board for Cook County only so that we don't have that third agency to go to. And that is very bad and very unfair because many so, jurisdictions uh, how, are... Uh, how likely is that going to happen? I don't think it will happen, mm -hmm. but he advocated and he put a letter to the editor. And what he's saying is that, you know, he makes the decision, but it's the Cook County Board of Review that oversees his work. That is their responsibility to oversee the assessor's work. When a taxpayer is unhappy with the assessor and he doesn't get a, anything, he gets to the, go to the Board of Review. And then if he's unhappy with the Board of Review, we have the chance to go to the state property tax appeal board and they are you'll win 90 percent of time at the state mm -hmm. and cook county never got to go to the state until we fought for it in 1998 i fought tremendously for it and we got the legislature to change law and, and allow cook county to go and people could uh, file to the state uh, on their own without a lawyer right absolutely is there any help for them to do that is there could they do it online they can do it online the state property tax appeal board has just gotten um uh where you can online and put your scan your your documents up and send it online we only have about maybe a couple of minutes but i do want to ask you for the comparables when uh joe burials uh, gave the assessment his comparables were much more higher than the comparables that I found. So uh, we have to put those in. And is there a reason for that, that he put the higher comparables in there? Well, a lot of times you will not see a reassessment notice with too many comparables that are lower than the other. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot of times where the comparables support what he has on exactly. that. Th mm -hmm. That's true. But I have seen them where they were, a few of them were lower. But you have to get out of the box and you have to... You have the right to go into the assessment system bowels and look on the computer and see what other people are paying. So how could uh, people do that and then give us uh, your contact information? You, you would say cookcountyassessor.com. Mm -hmm. That's the number. Cookcountyassessor.com is the website. And when you put that in, it'll show you a research button, property, and you can almost pretty much teach yourself how to maneuver through it. And, it, and, it's, and it's very consumer friendly. It, I can say that. The Cook County Assessor site is pretty taxpayer friendly. So I, I would urge everyone to use it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, please give uh, our reviewers your contact information if they need to uh, contact you and ask more questions because sure. we are running out of time. Okay. Um, you can contact us at taxes2high.com. So Number taxes, T-O-O, taxes2high, H-I-G-H, dot com. And we give presentations. So if you go on our website, you look for the presentations. We're out there. We're in Morton Grove. Morton Grove has, ha has a, uh, a website up that we did. And you can learn on that one-hour presentation, that Morton Grove Library. But and we're going to be there with again. Chambers of Commerce, Historical Societies, and, yes. and all of this. Yes, and they, they sponsor us. It's not to get any taxpayers or clients. It's to train them mm -hmm. to be self involved and and help themselves without having to hire a tax consultant or a lawyer. Are there any resources online uh, uh, through your firm maybe that the people could access because sometimes uh, uh, people that don't commute that don't have a car it's hard to go to Morton Grove. That is true. Again you know if you go to uh, taxes2high.com you'll see the areas that we speak at but we speak a lot in Chicago and we're going to have a, a, a presentation in March at the Edgewater Library, and it will be posted. And I think the chambers are talking about having and sponsoring uh, a self-help, how to appeal your property taxes with laptops and computers. It's important. Mm -hmm. They need to be on there. You need to show them how to do it. 
and maybe the chambers like yourselves will sponsor. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming today thank and giving you. us such information. And we have some websites to research, and um, we're going to review this um, a little bit more. Great. This thank you for Andrea having me. This is Andrea Rayla of uh, Property Tax Reform Advocate, Bill Morton, President of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce, and I am Trudy Leong, Administrator of the Rogers Park Chamber of Commerce. This has been Community Unity Now, the D Tycoon Show. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you.